Tonight, we're truly getting an earful from the House Republican leader, Kevin McCarthy, as he vents his frustration with Representative Liz uh, Cheney. We have new audio of him actually trashing Cheney on a hot microphone, as Cheney's days in the House leadership clearly seem to be numbered. CNN congressional correspondent Ryan Nobles has details. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy has had enough. The GOP House leader caught on a hot mic telling a Fox News host what he really thinks about Liz Cheney. I think she's got real problems. I, 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 I've had it with, I've had it with her. It's, you know, I, I've lost confidence. The edited audio, which does not include the questions, a clear sign the Wyoming Congresswoman's days in House leadership are numbered. Well, someone just has to bring a motion, but I assume that will probably take place. Just a few months ago, McCarthy defended Cheney from the backlash of conservative members angry over her vote to impeach former President Trump and her critique of his role in the January 6th insurrection. You know, the conference decides all that. We're here talking about small business. Now McCarthy seems content to let the conference's far-right members take Cheney out of her role as the third-ranking House Republican. I have heard from members concerned about her ability to carry out the job as conference chair, to carry out the message. We all need to be working as one if we're able to win the majority. Cheney, meanwhile, seems prepared to go down swinging, refusing to lie about Trump. This is about whether the Republican Party is going to perpetuate lies about the 2020 election and attempt to whitewash what happened on January 6th. Cheney's spokesperson Jeremy Adler said in a statement, Liz will not do that. That is the issue. As the pressure mounts, Cheney, in a closed-door meeting with donors, said that Trump's behavior on January 6th was just too much for her. It is a threat to democracy. What he did on January 6th is a line that cannot be crossed. The jockeying to replace Cheney is already underway. Sources tell CNN that New York Congresswoman Elise Stefanik is already making calls about the job. Some Republicans would like to replace Cheney with another woman. In addition to Stefanik, Jim Banks, who currently chairs the influential Republican Study Committee, is being considered, as well as Jackie Orlowski of Indiana. And a dark horse, Mike Johnson of Louisiana, a prominent member of the Conservative Freedom Caucus. Tonight, Democrats are seizing on the GOP drama. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi sending an email accusing Republicans of looking for, quote, a non-threatening female seeking replacement for House Republican Conference chair. And Senator Mitt Romney of Utah, who was recently booed on a stage at a state convention, in part because of his vote to convict Trump during his last impeachment trial, Aren't you embarrassed? defending Cheney today, tweeting, Liz Cheney refuses to lie. As one of my Republican Senate colleagues said to me following my impeachment vote, I wouldn't want to be a member of a group that punished someone for following their conscience. And Cheney's uh, future as the third-ranking House Republican could be coming to an end as soon as next Wednesday. Multiple Republicans saying that the vote could come up the next time the Republican conference meets, which is on May 12th. This all happening, Wolf, because Cheney refused to buy into Donald Trump's big lie that he actually won the election in 2020. Wolf. All right, Ryan, thank you very much. Let's get some more on all of this. Uh, joining us now are CNN special correspondent Jamie Gangel, uh, CNN senior commentator John Kasich, the former Republican governor of Ohio, and CNN political commentator Mia Love, a former Republican member of Congress. Uh, Jamie, you're hearing from your sources, I understand, uh, that this could happen uh, as early as next week. Tell us how this all might play out what else you're learning. Exactly as Ryan said, I am told that uh, majority uh, that Kevin McCarthy thinks he has the votes, that it is a done deal, and that they expect the vote on Wednesday or as early as Wednesday, May 12th. I'm also told that Elise Stefanik, who Ryan mentioned in his piece, is the front runner to replace Liz Cheney, that she is lobbying for votes and has other people lobbying on her behalf. Wolf, a key point, Elise Stefanik is a Trump loyalist. And that's what this is about. Donald Trump got Kevin McCarthy to push Liz Cheney out. Not too long ago, I spoke to a source familiar with what Liz Cheney is thinking about all of this. And I was told, quote, that Liz Cheney is 
This is all not a surprise to her, that she knew this was coming, and that she is not afraid of the consequences. The stakes are too high, the source told me. And finally, Wolf, I'm told, Liz Cheney will not step aside. She will wait for the vote. We'll see what happens with that vote. Uh, Governor Casey, what do you make of this new reporting about this uh, escalating rift within your party? Yeah. Well, first of all, you know, being in the House leadership in the Republican Party is not exactly, Wolf, uh, Wally, uh, Will, Willy Wonka's golden ticket. You know, this is not that big of a deal if you're not going to be the number three person in the leadership. And uh, what they don't seem to t calculate is they create a martyr out of Liz Cheney. I'll tell you what will happen. She'll get her followers in the House. And I've always wondered when this was going to happen, when somebody was going to stand up and say, enough of this nonsense. So they could take her out. They could swamp her down. Uh, they could remove her from this place. But she's not going to go away. And there are like-minded people in the House, Republicans, and she will get a following. And she could be more trouble for them than she's being right now by beginning to group, get a group of people who say, we're not going, around, we're not going along with your nonsense anymore. So we got a long way to go before this, uh, this all plays out. But be careful. Be careful uh, when you take somebody out of a position like that, that you're not doing yourself ultimately more harm than good. She will have no constraints on what she will do going forward. Mia Love, you're a former Republican congresswoman. What's your response uh, to this uh, growing tension within the House Republican leadership? Well, I would actually like to issue a warning. I mean, removing Liz Cheney, who is the highest ranking female in the House of Representatives, she actually is the only uh, woman in leadership. You're going to remove her. And then this idea that we want to replace her with another woman is actually quite offensive. It's almost as if they're saying, you can only go so far. And if you don't agree with everything that we are saying, we are going to pick somebody else. That is the message that the American people are getting. And let me tell you, it doesn't look good for the GOP. It doesn't look good for our party. They should, however, focus on the um, out of control spending and some of the other things that they've got a lot of ammunition for. But that's not what they're doing. Yes. They're actually focusing on ousting each other. She's the highest ranking uh, Republican woman uh, in the uh, Republican uh, leadership. Uh, clearly, uh, Nancy Pelosi is the highest ranking woman in the House of Representatives. Jamie, do you yes. see all this as proof uh, that uh, former President Trump has this firm grip right now on the Republican Party? 100 percent. This is what Donald Trump wanted. He targeted Liz Cheney for going after him, and he got Kevin McCarthy to do his bidding. I think just it's important to point out that Kevin McCarthy would not remove Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, a fringe conspiracy theorist from committee assignments, but he is pushing out Liz Cheney one of the most conservative Republicans in the House. What do you think, Governor? Well, well, first of all, I, the Republican Party is shrinking. And the fact that she said that what happened on January 6th was horrible, she's got a lot of people in America who agree with her. And I thought the point that Mia, uh, that Mia made, which is, hey, they got so much to talk about in terms of tax and spend, back to the old days of tax and spend, so instead they're fighting with one another in an, em in an effort to have purity. I mean, it's just a, it's such a silly thing that's going on down there. And, uh, you know, I think Jamie might agree, though. Despite all this, these, uh, these Keystone cops may end up winning the majority back, and then they'll think they're on the right path, which in and of itself is just crazy. So I do, you know, I do agree with Governor Kasich. Yeah. I right. do think that they can yeah. win it back. 